Hello. Hello. Hello, Robin, sir. Can Hello. we move on to the next PPT, please? Next slide. Definitely. So I think there are people who want to join and then unable to join because that's what the message is being popping up on the screen. Yeah, yeah, we know. We have given them link also. They are joining. Actually, there is some technical issue to do. I don't know. I told you about that. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Why is the protective personal protective moving on to the next slide, please? Personal protectives are important specifically for anybody who's in medical setup because we are the people who are in potential threat and possible threat to the disease. Because we are coming in close contact with anybody who is a confirmed positive case or somebody who is a possible co uh, positive case. We may be treating people and helping them get better without even knowing if they are positive or not. So it is a mandatory rule now that we are supposed to wear PPE. But what PPE should be worn by whom is really a controversy because as and how the spread had come up, everybody wanted every single PPE, but there is a demarcation about who can wear what. So that is what we're going to discuss in detail from now on. Um, so I'm back to seeing no, PP, uh, no PPT at all. Sorry. I'm sorry, there's a technical glitch over here. I understand, sir. I understand. Sorry. So, Riju, in that, uh, Miss Riju, in that scenario, uh, you can open your PPT in your laptop, or like that way. Can you please uh, take the session? Because I'm also not able to open the PPT today. Is it possible? Visible, no. uh, Miss Rich? Is it visible? No, I can't see it. No, no, I can't. I can't see it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to open the PPT in my mobile so I can work through it. But then again, the the people who are participating they cannot see it. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's Is it visible it's now? Visible I'm now? sharing PPT. Here. Yeah, I can see it. But it's just that sometimes it gets stuck, so I'm trying my best with reading it. I'm so sorry for the problems here. It's perfectly fine. It's just technical issue. Okay. Yeah, I know. Do Thank you, sir. Reading? Okay. Shall we move yeah, there, to we have reading? already done that, sir. We have already okay, done so this one. Yeah, Preventive thank measures? You. Uh -huh. uh, can we move on to the next one, please? Preventive measures and... Mitigation measures. Mitigation, yes. So preventive measures and mitigation measures are something that we have already discussed, uh, which includes yeah. the basics, that is hand hygiene, avoiding uh, touching your eyes, nose, mouth, uh, specifically with what may you may presume as an infected hand, and uh, wearing the proper PPE and also disposing them after use, and of course, the social distancing, which has become the most important part of this uh, prevention in general. Thank you, sir. Can we move on to the next one, please?
So now we're moving on to the recommendation for optimizing the availability of PPE. So these three steps are important when we speak about the optimizing, that is the uh, possible availability of PPE, how to use it. The first one is minimizing the PPE need. This is what I was talking about. We need to understand who needs the PPE and how much PPE should one particular nurse require. Because if I'm not someone who is dealing with a possible positive case, I don't need to wear everything. Using PPE appropriately is also important because we know we are low on the supply. So it's important we understand what to use and we use it properly so that we are not diminishing the supply that is already available to us and to coordinate PPE supply chain. That is to make sure that we have a centralized system from which we are getting the PPE supplies. There is no manipulations there and whatever supply we are getting that is reliable. So can we please move on to the next one, please, sir? So the minimizing need for PPE, as you can see, is firstly, we can try and avoid using PPE in general. This would include the first step is using telemedicines. We, as we had learned and studied, we all know there is an invention, a branch of medicine, a branch of nursing, which includes telecommunication. So anybody who is uh, who thinks that they are having symptoms and who thinks that they don't really need a medical attention, they can try and communicate and call instead of everybody rushing to the healthcare center. I'm not saying that people should not get admitted because this is definitely a panic situation. But what they can do is definitely seek an opinion to someone who is at the hospital, at a healthcare service providers, who can communicate with them and tell them what is needed. Secondly is definitely the barrier, the physical barriers, uh i think this is something that has been practiced all over the world people who are the frontliners frontliners also include people at the registration desk when you're entering the emergency department or the places that you go in general should have a physical barrier which can be in the form of a glass or plastic so that you're coming in minimal contact with people you also know that when we are going to a social place where there are possible chances of a crowd, we have to maintain a physical distance of at least one meter because that is presumably how long the virus can transfer based on the latest researches. Uh, so we are hoping and expecting the virus doesn't transfer beyond one meter. That's the distance that people are recommending to maintain. So we need to stick to that because if we stick to that, I think we can really prevent the spread in general. And of course, restricting the healthcare workers from entering rooms uh, of patients who are COVID. When you know that a particular patient is corona positive, we need to make sure that we are not really entering the room and exiting the room again and again. What we can do is one time when you're entering, you can do all the things so that in that way, you're preventing the excessive use of PPE because you enter with all the gowning and gloving just maybe to take a temperature, you're coming back, removing all of that, and then you remember that you need to give medications as well. So all these things can be prevented if you have a proper plan about how to use the PPE. You can go in, do everything for the patient and come out. And also the people who are particularly taking care of the patients who are positive, uh, we can minimize by them not going to the patients who are not really a positive cases. That way we can uh, control the spread, I believe. Thank you, sir. Can we move on to the next slide, please? Also, the hospitals have taken up a step of uh, not allowing any more visitors. Now, this is a very dicey situation because everybody are in concern of their loved ones. They are worried about what is happening with their loved ones who are left in the hospitals alone. Uh, but we need to make sure that we make them understand it is important and it is for their benefit as well as the patient's benefit that we are restricting the visitors. We have to try and synchronize with them in a way that they are provided with an update about their patients. Now, um, I'm sure everybody throughout the world are taking ways so that uh, the visitors are not allowed. Sorry. 
Okay, so can we move on to the next one? Oh, yes, sir, of course it is. Can we move on to the next one, please? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. Is so, as is written here, the type of PPE use, which is something that I have been emphasizing since the very beginning of the presentation, depends on the type of setting, the type of parcels, and the activity involved. So the general PPE that we have always heard about includes gown, gloves, mask, and uh, eye protections. Uh, also, it depends on what kind of procedures are being done on the patient. If the patient is someone who has aerosol generating procedure like tracheal intubation, non-invasive ventilation, then they would require uh, a top notch uh, kind of resistance so that they are not coming in contact with anything that is fluid because we need to make sure that the gowns used by them are also fluid resistant. Thank you, sir. Can we move on to the next one? The next slide is visible to you regarding the respirators. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, so the next slide yes, is Robin, visible. Yes, it is visible. So regarding the respirator, previously it was advised that a surgical mask was okay, but now the respirators have come into the picture, which includes N95 which are also referred to as high performance filtering mask. Uh, FFP2, which is considered as one of the best uh, filtering face mask, which helps, uh, which gives optimal pre prevention and protection against any kind of droplet infection. A lot of thought have been applied to the use of these because they have been tested and have been verified that these are definitely going to help how much of help it does, we don't know, but we, they are definitely sure all the healthcare workers around the world, people who have researched and made sure that these would definitely minimize the spread because they have done a lot of testings. And that is how these two particularly uh, famous respirators have come into picture. Uh, these have to be worn by the medical professional who are dealing with in having respiratory symptoms and people who are dealing with procedures like we said before the aerosol generating procedures so that so that they are stopped from any kind of droplet infection and spread It also says that who should not be wearing a mask because nowadays everybody is in a state of panic and a paranoia to be honest and if it is not required people are recommending you not to wear a mask this was a very controversial thing in the beginning because everybody wanted to protect themselves by wearing a mask or by doing sanitization we were actually running out of sanitizers all over the world but what we need to understand is you need to be protected if you really are in dire need of protection. Otherwise, if you're wearing a PPE in a place that doesn't uh, vouch for any kind of spread, you're actually just causing panic among the people. So you need to wear the PPE only when it is required. The last topic, uh, the last main heading is the coordination of PPE supply and management mechanism. Uh, so can we please move on to the next slide?
Čo? Halo? Halo. Ja, môžem to nechcem. Yes, sir, thank you. So, what we really need to understand is, we have to rationalize where the PPE is actually necessary and whether the request is centralized. We cannot just take PPE from anywhere that's coming up. We need to make sure that the demand and supply are met according to the need of the PPE. So, for that, we need to make sure that wherever possible, if it is uh, adhered to the standards, we should reuse the PPE. Uh, reusing doesn't mean that if it is completely soiled, we have to reuse them again. If there is visible droplets on your PPE, you have to definitely remove it. Otherwise, if your PPE is clean and you're staying in one area, you can reuse it. Also, we have to make sure that the supply is from a central place that is reliable so that we don't have to compromise on the standard of PPE that is being provided to us. Can we move on to the next one, please, sir? So that's what I was talking about, the centralized request of management uh, to avoid that there is no duplication of the stock and ensuring that we are adhering to the management rules. Also making sure that the PPE reaches the right place and is distributed among those who are really in need. Everybody, as we know, are using and misusing PPE all over the world. That doesn't include just medical professionals. Because we are in panic, I would not blame anyone there. But also we have to control the distribution of PPE so that it reaches the hand of people who actually require it. Can we move on, sir? So almost to sum up, what are some of the additional precautions that we can possibly take are, again, the same topics that we are being emphasizing since the very beginning. Uh, our protection lays in our hand, so we have to make sure that if we don't have proper PPE, what we can do? We have to maintain a social distancing. We have to make sure that we are maintaining the hygiene. We have to limit the visiting and the visitors both. If you know that there is a spread anyway, we have to control the visits to the places. You have to maintain social isolation as much as possible. If you know that you're showing symptoms, you have to be responsible in protecting yourself as well as others by self-isolating yourself for maybe the 14 days that is the incubation period. And also make sure that you are in contact with someone from the healthcare who can give you the correct advice about what should be the next step, whether or not you need to be admitted to the hospital or whether or not it is fine to be in your home and isolating yourself. Okay, sir, can we move on to the next one, please? So this is an image of donning and doffing. Uh, the image is not pretty clear, but I believe everybody knows it from the beginning. The donning includes uh, definitely starting with uh, the personal hygiene, that is the hand washing. You have to make sure that your hands are properly cleaned, sanitized. We will start with the gowning. Uh, then we will move on to the use of the surgical mask. Like I had mentioned before, we have to make sure that it is a fit mask, which fits properly covering your nose and the base of your mouth, uh, base of your face, so that there is no chance of any kind of droplets or any kind of infection entering your mask. We have to wear eye protection. In some hospitals, there's a rule of wearing goggles as an eye protection. Some places, they, are, they have introduced the face shield, which is also working as the eye protection. And the last one is gloves. Uh, for gloves also, depending on the places that you're working in, some people prefer double gloving or some people may just use one. The basic idea is that the glove should be covering uh, as for as, as much of your hand surface as possible. Now, the dawning that you can see here may vary because I have gone to a few sites. There are people who are doing it differently. Some people are going starting with the gown, uh, sorry, starting with the gloves and then moving on to the gown. So it can differ based on your wearing apron or is it some other protective gear that you're using. 
What's important is also the duffing, that is the removal part of the protective equipment, because the idea of duffing uh, protectively is to remove it by not coming in contact with the outer surface of the prop. I'm sorry, sir. Um, did you want to say anything? So this is the aiming slide, I guess. Hello. Hello. I think so. This is the ending slide, and we have the thank you slide after that. Uh, so actually, I, I did not finish the duffing part. If we can go back to the last one, please. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt again. Uh, I was speaking about the duffing. The big basic idea of duffing is to not come in contact with anything that is on the outside, which includes not touching the outer surface of the gloves or any other protective gear that you're wearing. You have to make sure that whenever you're removing it, you're removing it from the inner part so that you're not touching anything outside. And of course, after you're done with removal of all your PPEs, make sure that you're disinfecting your hand. Uh, you are using the alcohol drops and sanitizing yourself and of course eventually making sure that the waste is disposed into proper bins thank you hello participants hello. if you have any doubt you can write in chat panel i know there is some technical issue today so people are not able to join But whosoever is present here, they can ask their questions. Uh, Kusum. Yes, Riju, ma'am. Uh, just for a minute before anybody asks any question, I really want to thank Robin sir for his patience with running my slide because I understand there is some serious technical glitch today and I don't know why it happened. But I'm really thankful to sir and of course to you just in case I don't get an opportunity after this. No problem. We will post this video. Uh, actually, you, we have recording, so we will be posting this video on YouTube, so people will be able to watch it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I hope that it was my pleasure. With you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I hope it was at least of some worth because it was really very distracting for me as well, so I can understand what is happening with people who are watching this. No, no worries. Exactly. <laughs> I have a query, Nijum. Okay, somebody is asking for the people. Hello. Uh, sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah, I have a question regarding this PP. Can we can we reuse the PP which is used in an isolation unit uh, of a non-suspected of a non-confirmed case? You are asking if we can use the PPE in an isolation unit of a non-confirmed case. No. I'm asking, can we re reuse? reuse the PPE of a patient of a patient if it is in the non-confirmed case well sir if it is a non-confirmed case I don't see any harm in reusing the PPE because like I said because we are running short of the PPE we have been trying to make optimal use of the PPE that's being available to us and if you are sure that there is a case who is non-confirmed I don't believe it would be a harm in reusing the PPE until unless you're definitely sure that the PPE have been contaminated by a droplet or any other way, then you definitely should remove it. It doesn't matter if it is a confirmed case or it is not, but definitely if it has got soiled in any way, you should definitely remove it. Otherwise, reusing would not be a harm there. Okay, thanks so much. That was really informative. Many people, many nursing fraternity are asking can we reuse it if patient is non-confirmed and these queries are coming up from the junior nursing staff over here in my facility yeah because uh, i feel uh, like i said a lot of thing is because of the panic that we have about the covid but as long as you know that your pp is okay it, it the mask is fitting your face correctly there is no obvious droplet on your ppe I don't see any harm in reusing it because we also need to make sure it is better than reusing. It's better if you are reusing it instead of, you know, having no PPE at all. So if the PPE is good, it is clean, you can definitely reuse it instead of wasting it, I'll say. 
<coughs> thank you and one more question just after that i have arise in my brain mm -hmm. just i want to ask nowadays everybody is using a mask yes sir so and n95 cannot be washed i guess mm -hmm. so is it right we can use that n95 for a couple of days so n95 actually the basic idea because it's a filtering mask was because it can definitely protect you from any kind of droplet or any kind of infection entering a mask is also kind of doing the same thing the best thing is that mask can is, is something that you can be washing and it has a longer it has a less duration n95 people prefer because they believe that it's a filtering mask it definitely helps with the circulation and everything and of course the fact remains that uh, we are more inclined towards anything that is fancy we are more inclined towards anything that people say should be recommended but i think both of these work the same way n95 is definitely better okay. if you are in a medical setup with doing procedures which can be aerosol generating that is suctioning anywhere which there is a possible spill of any droplet i think that's where you can definitely go and use n95 otherwise the use of face mask would of course suffice the whole idea of ppe yeah thank you so much you it was really informative for me thank you yes, sir i can i can thank you enough for your patience for running my slide i am i'm really thanking you again for that okay <laughs> fine for for my pleasure okay ms riju we be, received some uh, questions from our participant one question is it necessary to use n95 mask always on daily basis while going to markets or normal trips so i think this question is something similar to what robinson uh, robinson asked uh, mm -hmm. n95 is more costly than face mask if you're going to a face uh, sorry a market you don't necessarily need an n95 but uh, it depends on what you feel is right uh, if i'm saying that n95 should not be used and face mask is okay uh that would not really agree you know not everybody will agree with me on that maybe some people feel that they feel more protected with the n95 but i genuinely feel that if you are wearing a face mask because we are wearing face mask in the hospitals and i feel protected enough to be honest because we understand that wearing an n95 or a face mask would not different make a major difference as long as i'm protected in a good way the mask is okay for me to fit and there is nothing entering so i don't feel personally that you should wear an n95 whenever you're going to a market a face mask should be okay okay one more qu question what type of mask is effective uh, for daily use any mask that is covering your nose and mouth it can be the uh, to be honest i find it really pleasing how people have come up with various ideas of the mask but the idea of mask is not what kind of mask the basic idea of mask is that it should provide proper protection from your nose to the mouth so that nothing is entering into your respiratory system so any mask that covers you properly from your nose and mouth is effective it okay. doesn't have to be a particular type of mask okay okay so one more question can we share our pp with our colleagues one question i received uh, is it uh, that is something i would not recommend i don't think so it okay. yeah no right. i don't think so because i don't think that will be hygienically mm -hmm. accepted as well i would not want to share my pp with anyone but that's what i'm yeah. saying i cannot share with anyone but i can definitely reuse it as long as it is safe for me to reuse it so i would not want to share my pp with anyone okay thank you riju ma it was really a very fantastic session you have explained everything in very enthralling and insightful way we have received so much of information through today's session we are really thankful to you anyone uh, want to ask any uh, thanks a lot and participants you're welcome yeah we are not getting any more questions uh, i think so uh, we have a couple of questions <laughs> to for today's session and now we can wind up for the today session and thank you so much um, madam kusum can you please thank our guest speaker madam riju Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Riju Mamin.
it was really a very informative as a i as i've already said that it's very enthralling and insightful presentation you have shared your views you have shared your information your ideas and we you have already cleared our doubts also so we are really really grateful to you that you have ex accepted our uh, 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 to be our guest speaker so that we have got this opportunity to work with you and to listen to you we are really thankful to you and we are looking forward to call you again hello is it uh, is it audible to you miss riju the connection is going yes yes i, I yes is definitely i'm listening to you i know i know i think it's one of those days uh, i think maybe it's because i am on the speaker panel that's why it's <laughs> happening but thank you uh, kusum uh, for inviting and giving me this opportunity it it means a lot and thank you for all the wonderful audience who have been there and listening to whatever i had to say i don't know how much of sense i made but i think uh, i could just you know at least share my i'm not saying that i'm i've added any information i've given you any knowledge this is all i could understand and i hope if if somebody has more to share definitely please share it with kusum and i think she can definitely share it with me and robin sir really a very big thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you that, that was i was overwhelmed by your thanks <laughs> thank you so much actually robin sir we me and <laughs> i know i do that a lot thank you sir uh, robin sir me and riju ma'am yeah. was discussing about this that uh, if uh, i'm well, riju was saying that i'm going to present how many participants will be there i said uh, around 200 to 50 can come she said oh my god i thought 20 25 will be there <laughs> and it happened actually there is 28 birth participants see, see, god hears me you know <laughs> I'm, i'm very sorry madam riju but today's session was really informative yeah that, that is what technical glitch we are facing this issue yeah. and hope for the next the model session will have a trial run for that before the starting the session yeah okay uh, miss riju thank you so much Uh, no sir i'm i'm happy with the kind of participants that i've got thank you actually she wanted that only she wanted that only she made it very clear yesterday <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you everyone thank you dear speaker thank you so much thank you thank you have a good day please rest take of you care. and take care okay bye 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 please don't call